I think also I think it's important to empower men and most importantly women as well because I'm I'm quite but someone actually kind of educated me and said that because for me I thought a lot of these stories I mean for me they're easily accessible like in Bukhari now Alhamdulillah that's online you can easily Google a lot of these stories in here you know like women of the time of the Prophet some of the female companions asking for Friday a number of these questions so to, so it's so you know Islamically you're well within your right but someone kind of put it to me um, that the way even though a lot of women maybe have heard these stories compared to the stories that they hear about the importance of women satisfying their husbands and the stories about the hadith um, of angels cursing women who refuse their husband it's overwhelming so it's like they don't they forget about the stories that speak about women's sexual rights in Islam yeah, yeah. and even when you mentioned in the beginning earlier about um, a lack of education from a number of people, maybe they're not aware of these stories, but they're aware of the stories of the hadiths that speak about men's sexual rights. And that's where, for me, I don't buy ed a lack of education as a, as a legitimate excuse for a lot of people. For some people it is, because a lot of men, we're aware of our right to marry up to four women. We're aware of our right that if we feel that we're not sexually satisfied, we, we, we can marry another woman. We're aware of the hadiths that talk about a woman has to, shouldn't refuse her husband if he calls her in the bedroom. But when it comes to the stories of the hadiths that speak about women's sexual rights, when it comes to the hadiths that talk about that one of the deficiencies and in men is that if he's having intercourse with, a, with his wife without engaging in foreplay, without making sure that she's satisfied, oh, we don't know about this. Yeah, yeah. When it comes to the hadith, I think Bukhari in Muslim about a woman asking for requesting a divorce because her husband either was impotent or had a small penis. We don't want to hear about this. Mm. Did you understand? So that's yeah, why for yeah, me, like, that's that's something that I'm like, okay, are we doing a disservice to the religion because this religion is supposed to be for both men and women alike? But right. if we're just kind of speaking about our rights, and especially if you're in a position of power, whether it's again a da'i or a, an educator or a scholar or that's where there's a problem because the imbalance and that's why I'm always and I, I even myself going to study was just for myself personally and then obviously to my family I've got no intention of kind of doing this uh, full time or because it's a lot of unnecessary pressure and I'm not at that stage I'm not at that stage yet um, but that's one of the things I'm concerned with is that a lot of people know of these hadiths but we kind of ignore it or these stories because we just want to talk about men's right to sexual pleasure and men's right to sexual intimacy but women's rights it's like we don't need to talk about that when I mean, that was something that the prophet sallam, affirmed and it's something that a number of the women kind of complained and asked about and he didn't rebuke them so i'm still trying to understand why is it that people are still reluctant especially those learned people who know of this and they're in positions but they don't want to talk about it i i because that can change the dynamic for me. Because if you know that, even like with the story of, um, I've got the name of the companion, um, the wife of one of the wives of um, Omar bin Khattab, and you, we know Omar had a lot of ghira, right? Mm. Prote prote um, pr um, protective jealousy. And she would go to the mosque to pray, and but she knew that Omar didn't like it. But she asked him, like, why is it you don't prohibit me from going to the mosque? But, and I know that you don't want me to go to the mosque because obviously you're protective jealousy. And he said that because the Prophet Sallallahu said, don't um, prevent the, uh, the slaves of Allah, like the women, from going to the mosque. Like, don't prohibit them. So even though he wanted something, like, naturally wanted his wife to stay home, because this is a right that the Prophet Sallallahu gave to women, I'm, as a Muslim, I can't say anything. Mm. Yeah. Do you understand? So we've all got our things that we maybe don't want about women for, but if Allah's giving them a right, we can't get in the way of it if we're really that's saying that we're practicing, so to speak. But that's something that again I'm just kind of like trying to understand is that why is it when it comes to like women's sexual rights and stuff, we 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 act like oh we're too shy to kind of talk about it, but when it's men, we can kind of talk about it. That's something that again for me is it was listen reading the works of um, Al Suyuti, um, Al Jahil, um, Ibn Al Jawzi, Samwa, Al Ghazali, they were quite inspirational because they were speaking about maybe taboo topics in their time, but they were addressing it. And mm -hmm. I think even as Muslims, sometimes 
we can like talk about Islamic history and how great we was when we did this, we did that, but we're kind of blind to what's going on in, nowadays. You know, 100%. so that you know, so that's kind of and the, anyone that's willing or brave enough to kind of have that conversation, I definitely want to connect. And that's why, like I said, I, I do applaud you for your your the work that you're doing to keep it up. I saw you did like a live of intimacy. You did one of polygamy. I'm not going to go into that right now. Um, so you're you're tackling topics because you know that that's considered to be taboo, but it really shouldn't be if we understand our religion. You know, hundred um, percent. And that, and that's why I've always said Islam is a very holistic religion. And if people understood how it um, tackles so many um, you know social ills and how it aligns completely with what is uh, no, normative with the human uh, psyche, with the human fitra, I, I honestly think that like it makes a compelling case as being a divine religion just by that aspect alone. Um, and and intimacy was one of those things that like I, I do believe like it's an important topic. And in, I speak about marriage a lot and in multiple posts that I've written, I've always emphasized that uh, husbands and wives should always either pre-marriage or even if it's after marriage, even if you're married now, study these things because for me, like intimacy is like food, right? You can live your life eating porridge without any sugar, any honey, no absolutely bland porridge and water every single day. You can do that and you know, good on you for doing that if you want, if that's what you want. But you know, there's steak out there, there's pasta, there's so many different types of pasta, there's, you know, there's so many ways of like enjoying food and still fulfilling your nutritional value along the lines of what Islam's allowed. So say in a similar fashion, I've always said to people like, you know, look into intimacy, look at, you know, study t techniques, look at how you can please your wife better, how you can uh, please um, your husband better. And for me personally, I think it's a real sign of masculinity and a source of being proud as a man if you can satisfy your woman. I think it's actually a, a, a kind of, like every man knows that, and this is normal whether you're Muslim or non-Muslim. And of course in, in Islam, we don't talk about what we do private matters in the bedroom with our women and stuff. But every, everyone knows that for a man to not be able to satisfy his wife in the bedroom is, is something across cultures, it's something to be ashamed of. It's something that, you know, would be laughed at. And even amongst non-Muslims, non-Muslims boast about the fact that they can satisfy as many women as possible and such. So I, I do consider in being good at intimacy, it's a, it's a manly thing for men, of course, and for women, of course, it's a, it's a po very positive trait as well. And it, it needs to be talked about.